but I'm not very good at that. Chapter 10. What's your favourite subject at school? Write it down. Now, write the reasons why you've chosen it too. Without seeing what you've written, and I can't, of course, as this book doesn't have hidden cameras to spy on what you've written, I reckon your reasons might include a few of the following things. I like the teacher. I'm good at it. I've always done well in it. It's interesting. My mum helps me with it. I've had to work hard at it and now I can do it. I'm proud of my work in it. It's good. Don't know. Often we like things we can do well. I always loved English. Why? Because I could do it. I felt safe and secure, like I wouldn't get a lot wrong and that whatever I was given to do, I would be able to do quite a good job of it. I felt confident and, probably because of those things and the fact that they said I was really good at it, I really liked my teachers. Easy. Job done. School complete. But it's not though, is it? Everyone's got something they're good at that they could do with their eyes closed. But a massive part of secondary school is about putting the hard work in with those subjects where all you can think is, oh my goodness me, this is so hard. Not a fan of simultaneous equations? You're going to need to know them. Can't manage to bend your mind around Shakespeare and why Macbeth was hanging around with witches on the moor? It needs to go into your head somehow. So how do you make it through those tough moments in the lessons you enjoyed the least when it's hot, you feel like the classroom is some kind of greenhouse which is melting you alive in your blazer and tie, and all you want to do is to stare out the window or shout, ah, this is rubbish, and actually take what we need and learn from those moments? Well, there is no shortcut, I'm afraid. In my experience, it comes down to a few tips, but one big thing. Work hard, get grafting. The connections you make and the questions you ask in those subjects are more important than any others. If your starting point in the subjects you don't like is behind where it is in your favourite subjects, then you'll have to try even harder to make more progress and get where you're going. You can either look at that as something to be afraid of, don't, or something to challenge yourself with. The brilliant thing about starting a new school though is that it's a whole new world and what you used to think was a subject you weren't good at or didn't like might, with a new perspective, seem very, very different. So here are my tips for working through those subjects you see in your timetable and think, oh no, not again. Turn those rounds upside down and make those subjects your best friends. Number one, let go of the past. You might not think you have a lot of love for something at school because of loads of reasons. You could have had a false start and been away the first time something was taught. You might have missed something of some of the important ideas behind what you're supposed to do. This is a chance to change that. Give all that up and go for it. Sometimes with a bit of newness, we end up loving the things we don't really expect to enjoy. Number two, what do you know? Write down what you know about the subject right now, maybe before you even step into a classroom. I bet you'll surprise yourself with what you actually do remember. There'll be something useful in your head about it for sure. Feel confident. You know that, now what's next? Number three, what don't you know? This is probably in the driving seat of why you don't like a subject. What is it that you feel like you should know that you don't? Not just maths or science or French, but what specifically about those subjects? Where did you feel like you lost yourself in the forest of maths, leaving you cold, alone and with the light quickly fading? Let's try to pick a path back and see what it is that you don't know and then, with your teacher's help, you'll be able to identify the one or two bits that can allow you to find the right path again. Imagine you're a mechanic. You need to get under the bonnet of that subject and find out what's wrong. You wouldn't go interfering with the car's engine if you didn't have an idea about what to do with certain bits, would you? You'd want to get your head around what's going on. It's the same for subjects. Understand what's being asked of you and what you need to do, and then you have a better chance of succeeding and enjoying it along the way. Number four, what's the big picture? Why are you doing this subject? For example, in my English class, I've heard plenty, millions, of people claim that they'll never need Shakespeare again. So why do I have to do it? Well, there are loads of answers, but the main one is because he's the most famous playwright in English history and is brilliant. Your teachers are trying to inspire you and are playing their part in getting you ready for the big wide world. That definitely doesn't mean the big picture is to do exam, exam, exam for years. But what you cover early in your subject, including those that you don't feel the love for, you'll need in the future. Another subject that can be really divisive is PE or games, as they used to get called millions of years ago when I was at secondary. I'm used to ride dinosaurs to school instead of getting the bus. Some people love it and are the best at everything. They're the captain of every team going. Football, netball, rugby, cricket, swimming, you name it, they're the captain of the team. And just awesome at anything involving physical exercise. Some people aren't though, and can't even stomach the thought of getting changed in front of other people and actually standing on a cold field getting muddy. It can make you feel awkward, self-conscious and paranoid. 
Most people start, starting out at secondary school, though, probably fall between the two extremes. But sport is important. In fact, exercise is a really important part of life. It keeps us fit, it can help us keep us happy and gives us a lift when we're not quite at our best. A lot of people spend time in sporting clubs outside of school, but for almost everyone, that definite chance you'll have to do some exercise and so help keep you fit will be in PE. If something about it bothers you, you might want to get a change in private, you might not like the sports kit, or you might be petrified of swimming, then speak up and tell the PE teacher. They'll do what they can to help you with the problem. And if you're just nervous about stepping out of your comfort zone in a sport, for example in your football lesson, then take the leap, kick the ball and see what happens. You never know, there might be a messy in there somewhere. Number five, it isn't the end of the world. I know it might feel like a huge problem that you just can't get it in whatever subject is a struggle. But once you accept that perfection is impossible, then the weight can lift off your shoulders and you, can't, you can start to feel a little bit more positive. Whether we graft through all the work in the world to improve how we do in a subject or not, the reality is that everyone is still going to have things they're better at and things they like more. Just because you aren't great at that one subject, the following things will still happen. You'll still breathe oxygen. The sun will still rise every morning and set every night. People you care about will still care about you. It's fine. Do your best. Nobody will ask anything more. Number six, if there's nothing else, be resilient. We've talked about this before and it's one of the most important things you can do. If everything above fails, if you don't fall in love with the subject and you're dreading it every day, if you can't wait to leave because of that one classroom, there comes a time when all we have to do is get through it. Everyone has things they don't want to do and school's the same, but we can start to move our mindset from, oh no, I hate this, to, right, I don't like it, but I can and will get through it. Give yourself something to look forward to every single day, either in or out of school and those grey clouds following you around during the day won't appear quite as grey when you've got a cinema trip or a football practice to look forward to. Success isn't always about greatness, it's about consistency. Consistent hard work leads to success. Greatness will come, said by Dwayne The Rock Johnson, an American Canadian actor, producer and former professional wrestler.